Hi, this is Richard Gain, and I'm going to make a video to show you um, a 3D print that I've done for a customer on Make XYZ, uh, which is a website where I advertise my 3D printers and allow people to send models to have them printed. And the reason I'm making this video is because uh, these parts, uh, these ones here don't require support material, this one here does. And uh, you can see that from the bottom upwards there's no overhanging parts on these wheels. They've, they've printed nice and smoothly. Um, very, very pleased with those. And this part here does have lots of overhangs so it needed support material in several places and uh, that support material needs now to be removed. Um, this part was uh, sliced using the latest version of Slicer, it's the 1.0 release candidate version and um, the support material algorithm has apparently been improved so I wanted to uh, try it out and see how it works. So all of these zigzag parts here are the support material. This part here is the bar that uh, is being supported and all of this stuff needs to go but without damaging the uh, the main structure. So the first thing I've noticed is that it's quite difficult to see um, which bits are support structure and which bits are part of the uh, object itself and what you don't want to do obviously is damage it so I like to use a, a, a blunt screwdriver try and squeeze it into the gap and force it apart rather than using a a sharp instrument like the knife to cut it. I'll use the knife later on to clean off any areas that um, obviously need uh, little, little parts removing but breaking away the support material I think is best done using a blunt tool. So I'm looking for the plane between the object and the support and just gently forcing it apart. The idea is that the support material should just break away um, and with all of these 3D printing slicing programs uh, the critical factors are how dense is your support material and how big is the gap between the support layer and the object if you get it to the gap too big, the um, the object droops down. You can see here there's just been a couple of strands that are drooping down, obviously unsupported. Um, if you get it too small, then the object sticks very firmly to its support, and it's very difficult to remove. So there's these big pieces here and then various little pieces dotted around which um, may may have to come out or possibly I'll leave um, because the customer will know best which bits um, which bits are the object and which bits are support that needs to be removed. Those towers were just to support the end of a tiny amount of support material that's in that hole. I would have said that was quite unnecessary but the slicer obviously doesn't know which bits are vital and which bits aren't and tends to put it everywhere. Now this support here 
I'm pretty sure is again one side of the support that's in in this hole so the the support material will be going through the hole now when I break that away it leaves a nice clean surface behind it not the easiest to remove but you can you can change the density setting of your support material to have more or, le or less of it and uh, there we go Obviously here I've got quite a lot. It may almost be worth going back to the original model um, and inspecting it to see where the holes are and then I'll know which bits to remove and which bits to be careful of. So the, the support structures here look very strong and I think probably could be made substantially weaker um, to make this easier to remove. But that's a setting that we can control. Sometimes just squeezing it is uh, enough to break the bonds and, and force it to come away. That seemed to work quite well there. this is support. And really you, you just have to take your time, little movements, keep loosening it, applying force in the right places keeping your fingers out of the way because even though the screwdriver's blunt you can still jab it straight into your fingers if you're not careful
the um, the object itself has a solid skin and a honeycomb infill which makes it quite strong. Um, the support layer is deliberately weak so whenever you put uh, stress on it it should always shear at the boundary uh, between the support and the and the main part and not damage it, at least that's what I'm relying on. These little bits of support are going through the hole. Actually, um, small holes like this print very well without support, so it really doesn't need it. But um, never mind. There we go. Threads can probably come off. through this support it's actually going to be easier than breaking it because it's supported on both sides I can't pull it through if I cut one side off hopefully 
There we are, you can see the hole now. I should just be able to pull the other half through from the other side. Nearly there now. So it's um, that's certainly not the easiest uh, support removal that I've had, but this is quite a complex part with a a lot of support, and I obviously chose a very dense setting. And ah, oh, there we go. That's worked. Taking the sides off allows me to now just push through and clear those holes. I'll need to get a slightly finer tool to do the little holes, a small screwdriver, but uh, I think that's worked extremely well. Quite a complex, small, detailed part printed. Uh, with support material turned on. I hope that's interesting. Thanks for watching.